All right, for the last part of this interview, uh, Richard, I wanted to just get to know Captain Canuck. Uh, I'm going to ask you some, I'm going to fire off some questions to you, just to, just for the listeners that, that may not know him or may not have grown up with him. Question number one, what is his actual name? Well, in the original series, it's Tom Evans. Okay. So, and I, I need to clarify something here. When I first started writing the series, it's Tom Evans. He's a Mountie. He gets more or less, um, not conscripted, but um, signed up by CISO because he kind of fits the model of what the kind of agents uh, they want. Yeah. Both him and his brother, in fact, are both Mounties and they both get signed up for CISO. Um, and so, yeah, he's just, you know, your regular good guy, um, uh, true blue, Canadian, you know, good, honest, uh, Mountie kind of thing, and uh, gets signed up by CSO. And what's different about him is that, and of course this is all taking place in 1993, you got to remember that, Yeah. in, in the future. So uh, a couple of things that impact him is his brother is wounded, badly wounded in a mission and, and is... No, yeah, and he's no longer an agent for CISO, so that has an impact on him. Then what really changes things is he's out with his boy. He's a scout leader, okay, and he's out with his uh, boy scouts on a camping trip, and uh, aliens come along and examine the species, so to speak. <laughs> okay, and of course he's in the wrong uh, place at the wrong time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, him and these boys are. You know, all you know, ex- you know, uh, examined or by the the aliens, and in the process, uh, he gets zapped. And um, anyway, they wake up the next morning, no memory at all of this experience, of course, because that's what aliens do. You know <laughs> right, <I mean>? right. <laughs> and um, but when he goes back to CISO, um, they notice that he is twice as fast, twice as strong as any other agent they've got. And that's when the idea, the light bulbs go on in, in with the the heads of CISO. Let's make him, this guy is probably the fastest guy in the world, the strongest guy in the world. Let's come up, they come up with the costume, the code name. It's all about him representing Canada uh, and their fight against terrorism kind of thing. So he is a, he's a super special agent. Yeah. And... Uh... And this is yeah. where a superhero was born. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's all government made. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's all our federal government. Okay, so, so I was going to ask, that was my next question, what are his special powers? You just answered yeah, that. He's, no, he doesn't have any he's special powers, just augmented. Faster and what stronger. The alien, what the aliens did is they just augmented everything about him. You know what I mean? Okay. With that accidental zapping. and um, Okay. And then later on in the original series, uh, the the boys... Uh, he he starts to remember some things, and then but and then he discovers that the aliens are using the boys to research the species further. You know what okay. I mean? All about. So all uh, the boys have these special abilities as well. No. Oh. They, no, they weren't zapped. But what it is that the aliens are just using them to just explore. Uh, you know, the the level of technology and. Society on Earth uh, in that time period, kind of thing. You know what I mean? These, you know, they're just examining the species, and um, and that's when you know, and then eventually they end up fighting the aliens and uh, um, and sending them on their way. But uh, okay, all right. You know. Is he single? Yeah. All right. This is this. The ladies want to know these. Yeah, yeah. He's single. Yeah. Okay, so he he is single. Too busy. And is he available? <laughs> Yeah, well, right. yeah, I mean, there was some romance. He gets involved with a nurse in the original series, okay. a nurse who, who ends up tending to him, and they become romantically involved later on. But right. uh, yeah, no, he's he's single. He's still, oh, he, he's yeah. he's currently single. <laughs> yeah, and in, in, in the summer special, he runs into her again, and uh, oh. <laughs> uh, later on, and she's married, and this is a bit of a shock. And uh, but her her husband ends up getting uh, killed in the end of that episode. Right. He got turned into, he got morphed into a, a monster and uh, and and ends up getting killed in an explosion. So oh boy, okay. Uh, he's Canadian. Uh, yeah. I'd like to know where was he born. Well, 
I hadn't nailed that down other than I envisioned him being born in Winnipeg. Those are kind of, you know, bits of, uh, you know, well, something I learned later on. Those are details that one should uh, establish early on. But I didn't. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, I remember getting a, a worksheet on, you know, developing characters and, and a long, long list of questions that you need to answer to really kind of give your character all, you know, more volume, I guess, you know what I mean? And um, and that's not something we did. But now, <laughs> now you know, now I've got Fatty and, and Paul. Now they're coming up. They're, they've decided he was born in Flin Flon. Where's okay. that? Yeah. <laughs> Flin Flon, Manitoba? Oh, uh, yeah. I've never heard of no? that. No? Well, it's... <laughs> but he's still Manitobian. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. And I, I always had him as part Native. Oh, okay. Did, yeah. I didn't know that. He was part native. Part native. Very Canadian. Yeah. 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 I I just felt he had to be really Canadian. He had to be part native at least. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so he's part native, uh, and and all that's been retained in the in the animated series too. So is he educated? Yeah. You know, just your standard. Uh, you know, a little bit of of um, a, he's high school and a little bit of college, but but he gets um, he joins the Mounties before he finishes his. He's supposed to, uh, okay. okay, you know. All right. Uh, what does, you know how Superman, when he's not Superman, he's Clark Kent and he works for the newspaper. Does uh, does Tom Evans have another job or is this his full-time no. job? You no, know, really, uh, that was the big, other big difference is that this was really his full-time job. Yeah, he did have to be concerned about people knowing his true identity, but it wasn't like, him running into phone booths to change. Right. He's, you know, an, he's not a, it's not a secret. No, it's not a, well, it is a secret in the sense that, um, uh, they didn't, you know, just to, you know, when, when the government came up with the code name and, the, uh, and the costume for him, uh, they realized that, you know, making him a special agent and with his particular augmented abilities that he could be a target. So they decided, yeah, we gotta, you know, let him have some, um, life outside of the job, you know, we just, they won't tell the world what is, what this agent's real name is and what is, because, you know, then somebody might track him down at home. You know what I mean? Right, right. So, um, <laughs> it's sort of like an undercover cop in that sense. You know what I mean? So. What, who is his arch nemesis? Well, in the original series and in the animated series, it's Mr. Gold. Mr. Who, Gold. Yeah, Mr. Gold <laughs> is a international criminal. I mean, you know, he, he um, he's just with, with uh, ambitions to, um, I guess, manipulate governments and, you know, he sells arms and, and, uh, has aspirations to control governments. Just a good old evil guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he doesn't care who, who has to go, you know, in the process, so. What is Captain Canuck's weakness? Well, he, he's, you know, in the original series, he's he's definitely not a ladies' man. You know what I mean? He's not particularly outgoing in that sense. Or, he's a little bit awkward. A little yeah. bit awkward, a little bit shy kind of thing. Yeah. So, but, you know what I mean? So, in that sense. And, and I think, you know, that's been done with other characters too, obviously, but... Uh, you know, and the big problem is he's a ver he's a young guy. First he's a Mountie, then he gets drafted in CISO, which is much more, more pressure kind of thing, and then he gets made into this special agent, Captain Canuck, and you know what I mean. His life then is kind of taken over, but but in the original series too, um, he just he after a while he has enough of working for the government, and basically he doesn't give up his Captain Canuck identity. He just decides he's, he he carries on the role as Captain Canuck, uh, but he doesn't want to be controlled by the, the federal government in doing so. So he kind of le you know he, he he just becomes basically a freelance, or you know what I mean? Yeah. He's still Captain Canuck, and he works with other organizations now, Earth Patrol being one of them. You know what I mean? And uh, but and he just got tired of being uh, totally under the control of the federal government all the time. <laughs> he's sort of international. Yeah. Uh, he's a, 
Interpol or something? Or is yeah, he... well, Earth Patrol is, <laughs> is an organization started by an English guy, and he's going to be in the animated series as well, Lord West. So. Cool, cool. <laughs> All right, one last question, and this is more for my friend, uh, my best friend from high school growing up. His name is Steve Rogers. Okay, everybody calls him Captain, all right? <laughs> Ever, ever, since, ever since high school, we all just call him Captain. The guy who plays Captain America, his last name is Evans, by the way. Oh, is it really? Yeah. <laughs> so That's right. Is Tom Evans friendly with Steve Rogers? Well, Do they know the each Steve other? Roger, the, 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 no. The, the, um, <laughs> if they were to encounter each other, would, would, he, well, it, uh, would he shake his hand? Well, <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Um, but in the... Um, uh, when we go to conventions and we have Captain Kentucky wandering around, there's always a Captain America wandering around. In fact, way back in '94, I had a cap. Uh, we were invited to uh, the, the Comic Con in Philadelphia, and uh, we went down there. And I took a guy with me who wore the costume, big, strong-looking guy, wore the Captain Kentucky costume, and we had got some great shots of him. Marvel had their characters walking around, of course. Yeah, and they had uh, Captain America there, so we got some really neat shots of them um, going at it. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but we've done that since with with uh, those would have been fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Richard Cumley, this has been an amazing uh, interview. Thank you very much for uh, spending the time to to talk to me, and uh, hopefully our listeners will uh, uh, get a lot out of this interview. Uh, Thank you for being on Interesting Canadian Mormons. You can't get any more interesting or any more Canadian or any more Mormon than you. So, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. This has been another episode of Interesting Canadian Mormons. To participate in the discussion for this episode or to subscribe to the podcast, please visit us at interestingcanadianmormons.com. You can also find us on iTunes. Thanks for listening. <laughs>